What's up, everybody? Pastor Nate here at Wake World Church, Wake World Ministry. Um, so this week's sermon is going to be a little bit different. Um, uh, to be honest, I've been really in uh, in depth study of um, a study guide called Grasping God's Word that my mentor uh, suggested to me, and it's been awesome. Um, so to be honest, I really didn't have anything prepared this week, and uh, yesterday was my day of rest. It was Friday. It was my day off, and um, I had just things going on with family, and I got things going on with family tomorrow, and uh, as I said, I was in, uh, in the study big time this week. I have been the last couple, and um, to be honest, the previous week, I uh, taught off, at, uh, off of what um, I learned and, and uh what I, I believe the Lord wanted me to speak about, and I'm going to be obedient in doing that now because yesterday and today, when I was walking, I was like, "Man, I don't, I don't have a sermon ready. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to speak about." And I was just really thinking about some things today, and um, I think it was confirmation by uh, by uh, what happened today, what a friend approached me with, and um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, be obedient and talk about it, and. Um, that is, I was thinking at work today, I was like, you know, I see all these people walking around in the mall, and I know some of them profess to be believers, and I'm not saying that they're not, but I wonder how many of them truly get into God's Word. I wonder how many of them truly know what God's Word says. Furthermore, why it's so important that we do know what God's Word says. You know, people, I... Uh, Apologize about the background noise and stuff. I just I want to have a real moment with y'all. I, I want to I want to share my heart with you guys. Um, I don't do this to entertain you all. Uh, I don't do this to glorify myself. I, I do this because God has called me to do this. No matter how many people view this, I know there's going to be that one person. Even if it's just one person, this this touches, whether it's this video or any of the videos that I've done or any of the sermons that I have done or any of the things that I've spoke about that leads someone to Jesus or or wants to hunger for more of a relationship with him, that, 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 that they don't want to feel stagnant anymore where they're at and just give up completely, but they want to press the envelope when it comes to walking with the Lord and, and everything that it means to walk with him and his word. So with that said, I'm, I'm just going to have a real moment with y'all, if that's okay. Um, I do that a lot. But let me just go ahead and just, uh, I have a couple scriptures I want to go over, but why is it important that we know God's Word? I mean, every Christian will say, yeah, we need to know God's Word because it's, you know, it's God's Word. This is true. But, you know, it, 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 it speaks true, and uh, uh, I'll share an example of why we need to know God's Word, because sometimes the things that we say in the situation, what's going on, is not necessarily in God's Word, even if we think it is. I'll give you an example of that. It's, it's kind of funny. But the whole thing is, it goes to, if you guys have been watching me for a while, um, you all know that I'm a big Second Amendment supporter, I'm not trying to do a political thing here, um, but I, I uh, if you don't know, I mean, I, I trained uh, a couple times in my life to become a military contractor, and this this last time around, uh, God called me to do ministry, and here I am, almost uh, over three years. But what I learned from there, and what I am co constantly a student in that, is uh, It's tr so true when, uh, and you know, I didn't necessarily have, uh, I, I planned to go to a, a uh, training to get certified and get my foot in the door. I did a little bit of the school work at the school in Colorado, ESI, but the majority of it was me getting down and studying it and practicing the maneuvers and going over the situations and just constantly wanting to learn more and more. And the saying is so true, you, are, you only fight as much as you train. You're only able to fight as hard as you train. When it comes to things that happen in our life, 
on the situations that happen every day or the spiritual warfare that we um, face every day. Maybe it's not affecting you, but it's affecting somebody that you know, and maybe they may not believe, be a believer, but you are. And you know that with God, all things are possible. And you know that His Word is His living Word. It's the history, it's the story, it's his love letter, it's his, it's his map for us. And it's also, I love, I love the scripture where it talks about in Ephesians, that this is a sword. But again, you're only going to be able to fight as much as you train. You're only going to be able to fight the spiritual battle as much as you train, as much as you get in and know God's word people say well that doesn't really make sense why don't I just pray God's Word is, is so powerful God's Word can help you um, go through the situation or better give comfort to that person say you know what in God's Word I'm talking about the Living God his word says this it helps us get through the storms in life it helps us um, confront or react or respond to the situation that's in front of us rather we're going it through our going through it ourselves or somebody else is going through it. the other thing is is man we got a, a another thing that I've learned in the tactical realm of things and I'm, I'm not trying to seem like I'm some special special operations guy I just um, I, I love uh, training and stuff and I'm learning that I need to train just as hard in this. I need to train just as hard in God's Word. Maybe not for myself, and that's why I train is not for myself, but for others, just in case I have to respond one day. I'm only going to be able to fight as hard as I need to fight as hard as I train. And the same thing with God's Word and the spiritual warfare side of things. And the circumstances that happen to people. And they come to me and say, hey man, I need some prayer. This is what's going on in my life. Because of what happened today, you know, I, I've had a, f a family member, my brother-in-law, go through cancer. I've had an uncle go through cancer, and he's going through a stroke right now back in Colorado, and he's he's going through that. You know, that's my family, and I love them dearly, and I, I don't want to see him battle like this, going through what they do. But you know what's amazing is they trust God through that. And I know he's going to take care of them. But when it comes to someone that you are trying to walk a journey out with, when it comes to the Lord, trying to get them to just trust in him and call on him. With the news that I received today, I went complete tunnel vision. Tunnel vision is something, again, you learn in the, in the tactical uh, training side of things. is when an intense situation occurs, everything else around you is almost a blur, and you just focus intently. And that's what happened today when my a friend of mine told me that she has cancer. She's been diagnosed with cancer for the fourth time, and this time they've given her a life expectancy. I just completely want tunnel vision. I completely just focused. I didn't know what else to say because she's just saying, you know, do whatever you do. And I was like, you know, I, I, I'll, I pray. I pray and I, I know that there's power in the name of Jesus. And I was, I was just walking home from work. I just had a real moment with God. I've had a couple of those this week and I'm not trying to just air my business between me and him, but. It's like, God, you know, if, if this is truly her time, that's how I started. It's like, Lord, is this, if this is truly her time and she only has 12 to 18 months, then Lord, I pray that this is, this is the best time of her life. And this is the time in her life she becomes so close to you that you will be the realest thing in her life. And then the other side of things that said, Lord, I also know in your name there is healing. There's complete healing. And I have faith that that can happen. But again, it, 
it goes back to reason why I reverted to that even though I want to be able to revert to other areas and this is why I'm telling you this is because some people don't know this and they just don't know what to do I said I, at that moment in time I went tunnel vision I was like oh wow and I said no I, I, I believe you're gonna be okay I believe God's not done with you but you know when I got in a real time with God and I was just walking home I was like man Lord if this truly is her time because you know that you know our time you've numbered our days Lord, if not, I pray that all glorification, all praise is yours. So I just want to share a couple of scriptures with you all. Um, in Psalms 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You know, that's such a real scripture because, man, I, I've been through storms. And I was like, Lord, I don't know how to go through with this. And I, I don't know how my friend is going to get through this. And I know God has, has called me in her life for a reason, for many reasons, just aside from this. But it's like, Lord, how can I help my friend? I was, when I was walking to the store, when I got back home, I just had to go for a walk. And it's like, how can I help my friend through this? And again, it goes back to, man, what do I know in your word that I can share with her? Your living word. And my last scripture here, if you go to 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verses 16 through uh, 17, it says, All scripture is breathed out by God and provable for teaching for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Again, I love the scripture that talks about the word of God as a sword, and I, I want to be able to step with my friend in this situation and be able to take the sword of God and be like, you know what, no matter what happens, God is in the midst of this. Rather, it's this is the time that he has numbered your days, and you're going to stand before him, I know he's going to be with you every step of the way if you want him to be, if you call upon him. Or I know that in the name of Jesus, people have been completely healed of leprosy, of blindness, of, of, of being paralyzed. Many other things that happened that he told them not to write. And even when he went back up to his throne, The disciples on the beat, they became the apostles and they went out. People were healed in the name of Jesus. I know that much of my sword and I know that's where this battle starts. This is where this fight starts where I'm reverting to my training. You're only going to be able to fight as hard as you're only going to be able to fight as hard as you train. Again, I keep on saying that. I'm only going to be able to be situationally aware spiritually as much as I um, allow myself to be. And in this situation, I know it starts with my hands folded and on my knees and asking the saints to pray, but knowing what God's word says. Do you know what God's word says is what I'm getting at? Because let me tell you something, the things that are coming, it's kind of like in my closing thoughts here, it's kind of like, you know, we're going to be opening a, uh, a uh, home church type thing here, a Bible study in my neighborhood, and I'm so excited for that. And we're thinking about the things to teach people, and we need to just go to the basics and see where people's at. Maybe they don't believe at all. Maybe maybe they started to believe, or they kind of did before, or maybe they are a believer, and they just want to be able to fellowship and know more of God's Word, and we walk this out together. And we were talking about going through these books and stuff, and no, no offense to Francis Chan, the most important thing we have is God's Word. That's what people need to know, know most of all. We don't need to get from other believers, and I'm not saying... Don't do that, but I'm saying don't let that be the thing you revert to, what you respond to first. Let this be, let his word be the first thing you respond to. Again, it goes back to how are you training? Because when the, the, the circumstance, when the situation, when the thing, when life happens, how are you going to respond? Are you going to freak out and say, why are you doing this, Scott? 
because you know what I got to tell you that's the first thing that I did and let me just give you a funny story just to kind of lighten the mood a little bit um, the guy we were praying for one time in Bible study and he was struggling keeping a job and working and um, I remember in prayer <laughs> again this is why you got to study out God's word and know it um, because this sounded like something Jesus would say, but it wasn't at all. I remember in my prayer, uh, I said, Lord, your word says, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man a fish, you feed him for a lifetime. <laughs> and I remember hearing people as I'm praying to start laughing like that. And I get done and just everybody's looking at me all weird. It's like, Nate, where in God's word does it say this? And I was like, it's in there. It is in there. And the thing is, is I've also taught this. I've talked about this a few times, but I've also taught this in some of my sermons. And now that I look at it, I know God is laughing on his throne, but I, I Googled the heck out of this for a while and, uh, and I couldn't find it. And I had to, I had to, re I had to uh, accept that, that rebuke, if you will, that correction and uh, understand that that may be something that Jesus says, but he didn't say that. And uh, this is why we got to study ourselves approved, as we just read in uh, 2 Timothy 3. But I want to just ask you, I just want to have a real moment with you. Maybe there's something going on in your life right now. Can I just tell you the first thing to do? Um, maybe you're spiritually, situationally aware right now of something that's about to happen or you're going through. Or maybe somebody else is. The first thing you need to do, pray. Pray to the living God. Pray to Jesus. Because he will answer. I don't know how he's going to answer. I don't know what he's going to answer with. But I know the one thing you also need to do is go and search his heart. And that's in his word. Train yourself in this. Before any other devo devotion. Those are all great and stuff. But it comes from the Word of God. Ask His Holy Spirit to come upon you to help you understand. As I am a student in that right now, I'm going through the whole Bible again, starting in the Old Testament. I've never fully read the Old Testament. And I heard God's uh, calling to do that, and that's where I'm at. Um, I got confirmation from my elders and my mentor. So I am. And let me tell you something, that's a journey. But I'm learning this sword more on how to fight battles that arise. Because again, I don't want it just for myself, but also for others. That's why I train. That's why I, 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 I do this ministry is to help others. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, the word says, let me just say this, that man, in the beginning, God knew you. The thought of you wasn't enough. That he wanted to see you live. You are his most precious creation. No matter what you're going through. No matter what you're in in the world. Um, it doesn't matter if you're running from things uh, because you in your past or you are right now. Look. I am no longer a practicing sinner. I am redeemed. doesn't mean that I don't mess up when I sin sometimes. But a sinner means continuing to do it. I can tell you this. I'm a broken man only held together by Jesus Christ. That's it. Without him, I'd be like everybody else. But the thing is, he doesn't want you to be like everybody else. Because he didn't create you to be like everybody else. You have an individual fingerprint for a purpose and a reason. He has a purpose for you in this life and for eternity. I don't tell you about Jesus Christ so you can just go to heaven. I tell you about Jesus Christ so you can be with him in heaven. Look, people, this world is dark. There are some good things about it, but it's not godly things. It's not, it's not the things of God. He is the only one that truly is good. He's just. He is more love than he is wrath. And that's why he went on the cross is because we weren't getting it. We are building this religion versus he's wanting a relationship. 
And if you look through the history in the Old Testament to where we are now, we see the repeat of things of what's happening all the way back then, today. We keep on going back to the things of the world that hurt us and destroy us versus turning to Him that gives us true life. My friends, that is why Jesus Christ came down so He can rebuild that relationship with you and Him. It doesn't matter where you're at right now. If you call upon Him, He's going to meet you where you're at. And if you trust Him and take His hand, He'll lead you where He needs you to go. I can't promise you it's going to be easy. But you're following the living God. You're following the one that created you in your mother's womb as it says in Psalms. You're following the one that has the true plan and purpose for your life. It may be completely something different from what you're doing right now. As it said, <laughs> I was dead set on trying to become a military contractor. Here I am. And that's, that's, that's the type of person that he wants. Here I am, Lord. Do what you will with me. If you haven't heard about Jesus Christ like I just explained to you, he did come down to the earth. God came and dwelled in the flesh of a man like us. He was 100% man and 100% God. Jesus Christ is his name. The living God. He's been since the beginning, and he'll be since the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega, and he loved you so much that he took his own wrath upon himself so we wouldn't have to. And he did that on the cross for the, for, for the remission of your sins. As we have all sinned, as I said, people, the things of this world are not of God. They're of this world. Read, I think it's uh, 1st or 2nd Corinthians 14, I think it is. It talks about the God of this world, lowercase g, the Satan. God may have all the authority, but Satan does have some. Ultimately, God is in control. And man, if you turn to him, I can tell you, if you put your trust in him, your life will change completely. And I'm saying it's going to be easy. But I can tell you, from the journey of it, it's worth it. It'll be worth it the rest of your life. Now watch the things that God does in your life and who he puts in your life. But again, if you've never heard Jesus Christ as your Savior before, the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Choose who you will serve, it also says. God's word also says that if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. That if you believe in your heart that he died and rose again, and paying for your sins on the cross with his blood being spilled, that you are forgiven of your sins. I'm not going to tell you to repeat a prayer after me. I'm going to tell you to go spend some time with him. Call upon his name. Say, Lord, I, I do believe that you died and rose again that you paid for my sins on the cross and that with your new life it shows that I have a new life with you people if you truly mean that and you repent of your sins you say Lord you know I have sinned against you I, I, you don't even, I, I think if you truly mean it with genuineness he understands those sins because he paid for them over 2,000 years ago on a cross he carried for us so we wouldn't have to experience a second death complete separation from him you think this world is bad now when he takes his grace away his presence this world's going to get a lot worse right now even with the things that are going on we think that's bad when that happens this world is going to be exactly what chaos stands for but you know what right now he does offer you grace he does offer you forgiveness he does offer you a way to him call upon him this is the day or the night of salvation this message is for the whole world not just here in america not just for the youtube people here i ask you to share this not for my sake but for the sake of others and remember be spiritually situationally aware of what's going on in your life other people's lives and if they ask you to pray for something really be intent as i said it naturally happened i tunnel vision when my friend told me this 
but also know how to fight this with that person. Know your sword so you may do battle, so you may be able to fight hard, train and study hard. God bless you all.